The atmosphere felt tense, and Phil's heart raced as one of the men behind him casually locked the door. Another stepped forward, positioning himself in front of it. Panic surged through Phil, but he forced himself to remain composed, his gaze meeting Greg's in confusion. Greg, what's going on? Phil asked, his voice trembling. Greg gestured for him to sit. Please, take a seat, Phil, he said, his tone devoid of warmth. Reluctantly, Phil slid into the chair opposite him. They're here to give you the jab, that's all Greg stated, as if it were a routine matter. I'm not doing it. I don't want it, Phil replied firmly, his fists tightening. Greg's expression remained impassive. You have to get the jab, Mr. Lloyd. It's company policy, and more importantly, it's the law. Phil felt a wave of despair wash over him. You can't force me to get the jab. Ah, but Mr. Lloyd, I believe you're mistaken, Greg said, his voice laced with an unsettling undertone. In an instant, the medical staff moved in. Before Phil could react, they seized his arms, pinning him to the chair. Despite his frantic struggles, they held him tightly. The nurse, wearing a disconcerting smile, approached him, needle in hand. Without hesitation, she inserted the needle into his arm, pushing the plunger as Phil's world began to spin. Every muscle in his body screamed in protest as he fought against their grip, but it was futile. Once the jab was given, they released him. Dazed and disoriented, Phil slumped in his seat, struggling to comprehend what had just occurred. Make sure you get the next jab when you're called in. Okay, Mr. Lloyd Gregg's voice broke through the haze. Before Phil could reply, the nurse chimed in, her tone overly sweet. The nurse leaned in closer, her voice almost comforting. I don't think you'll be causing us any more trouble. Will you? Her words sent a chill down Phil's spine. There was something unsettling in her tone, almost sinister. Phil found himself unable to speak. Without another word, the medical staff turned and left the room. The doctor who stayed behind simply nodded. Good afternoon, he said coolly before following the others. Phil remained frozen in the chair, his mind racing as he tried to grasp what had just occurred. The next day, Sam walked into the office canteen at lunchtime, expecting to see his usual lunch companion, Phil. As he chewed on his sandwich, he scanned the room but Phil was nowhere to be found. He looked over at Daisy, who was sitting nearby. Where's Phil? Is he off today? Sam inquired. Daisy didn't meet his eyes right away. When she finally did, her expression was oddly grave. Haven't you heard? He got sick. Sam's heart dropped. Really? I hope he's all right. Daisy shook her head, her voice soft and filled with sadness. He died last night. It's such a tragedy. They came to give him the jab at work yesterday, but I guess it was too late to save him. That evening, Sam sat in silence, trying to make sense of it all. Phil had always voiced his concerns, particularly about the jab causing illness instead of preventing it. He had raised alarms, made a fuss, and now he was gone. Sam couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more to this. He wondered had Phil's refusal to comply with the jab really led to his death, or was it all part of something darker? What if Phil had been punished in the most severe way for his defiance? Sam's mobile phone buzzed, its sound echoing like a thunderclap in the tense silence of his room. He stared at the screen, dread rising within him as he read the message. It was an urgent notice to come in for an emergency booster jab the next morning. His heart raced. What if they were out to get him? What if Phil's theories had spread, and now Sam was being targeted too? Had they already begun eliminating anyone connected to Phil? With a growing sense of panic, Sam called in sick, locking himself away in his apartment. The doors were shut tight, the curtains drawn just enough to block out the outside world. The silence was suffocating, but then the dreaded message arrived, you have missed your appointment. Please come to the surgery immediately for your booster jab. Missed appointments waste money and put lives at risk. Sam's fingers trembled as he read the words. A chilling thought gripped him just like Phil. He refused to go. He wouldn't become another victim. His phone buzzed again. Health department flashed on the screen. Sam pressed the red button, ending the call, but the phone rang again, and again, and again. Soon the calls were coming in nonstop. Terrified, Sam switched his phone off, cutting himself off from the world, the next day, Sam couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Spooked and unsettled, he drove to work, trying to push away the nagging thoughts. But as he pulled into the office car park, 
His eyes froze on two cars pulling up ahead of him. People in white coats doctors stepped out, carrying briefcases. At the front of the group was a nurse, flashing a bright, almost too friendly smile. Sam's heart raced. They're here for me. He recalled Daisy's words about Phil being cornered at work. Was this all part of a larger scheme? Were the company and perhaps all employers complicit, allowing doctors to administer the jab to people against their will? In a surge of panic, Sam whipped his car around and sped back toward the main road. He had to escape. He couldn't face them. He couldn't face them. He couldn't let them inject him. As he drove, a chilling realization dawned on him. If he took the jab, he would share Phil's fate just another statistic. The news always reported that hundreds died from the flu each year, claiming the jabs were meant to protect them. But what if that was a lie? What if Phil had been right all along? What if the injections were the cause of those deaths? What if Phil had been targeted for standing up against it? Everything began to click into place. It all made sense now. As Sam turned onto his street, he spotted an ambulance parked outside his house, its lights flashing against the overcast sky. Two women were knocking on his front door, peering through the windows, as if searching for someone inside. Sam's heart pounded. There's no time, he thought, slamming the car into reverse. Before he could react, a screeching noise from behind caught his attention. A large white van roared into view, its front emblazoned with bold red letters medical unit. Without a moment's hesitation, the doors flew open and people in white coats poured out, almost like soldiers charging into battle. They surrounded his car while the ambulance parked in front of his house swung around to block the road ahead. There was no way out. Sam's heart raced it all clicked into place Phil had been right. These shots weren't about protecting anyone. They were about keeping people weak, dependent, and constantly buying pharmaceuticals. The a burly figure in a white coat yanked open Sam's car door, his grip like iron. Sam struggled, but it was futile they dragged him from the car with rough, unyielding force. It felt like an arrest over a shot. Desperation surged through him, and he pushed back, managing to break free. But as he turned to run, he saw the nurse beside him, that practiced, polite smile never wavering, a syringe glinting in her hand. Before he could take another step, pain shot through his arm, and he felt the scratch of the needle piercing deep into his flesh. Sam's vision blurred, his legs buckled beneath him. He hit the ground hard, the world spinning around him. This, this can't be happening, he thought as darkness crept in at the edges of his vision. The nurse's smile never faded, even as she gently placed a hand on his shoulder and everything went black. 